Good morning chaps, welcome along to the vlog, Monday, great weekend, had a uh, wedding reception for a couple of good friends, Joe and Ollie, congrats, and uh, the knee is getting better every day, and I've come in this morning and I thought, you know what, we're going to try and get, uh, get a start on the control panel while I've got a little bit of downtime waiting for these beers to cold crash. I've just dry hopped them with their final addition this morning just behind me and put some auxiliary finings in there to clear them up. So it gives me a couple of days to uh, do some things in the brewery and work on the, um, the pilot kit. So one of the things that we're going to need to do is bring power out to the pilot kit and here we have a three phase cable and some connectors which I inherited you can see the state of that it's not something I'd ever leave it in so this box here for instance is knackered you can turn the switch on and off when there isn't even a connector in there and the cable I just took it off the wall at the time because I wasn't using it it runs up and across and ultimately into the junction box over there and on occasion when I've needed to, I have actually used it to power our three-phase rollers. But I'm not happy that with the state of the cable ultimately. So what we're going to do is we're going to clean this up, make it look a lot neater than it is, change this box out, get rid of this one, and then also we're going to jump off the one of the lines and the neutral and we're going to put a single phase unit on the side as well so we can control or plug in the uh, pilot kit when I've built it there's all the parts by the way for the control panel that we're beginning to assemble so this particular control panel is going to house a meter which will display volts, amps everything else on there, power factor. We're going to have an automatic water system so we can add exactly the right amount of sparge water or strike water to the mash and then we're going to have um, PID control for the boil kettle and the HLT. We're going to have PID control for the mash pump which will either be automatic or manual to control a rims coil so if the temperature starts to drop it will activate a mash pump meaning that it will recirculate through the rims coil pretty snazzy pump controls down here and uh, just on and off buttons for the rest of the jazz these are the little aviation connectors that I found for plugging in the pumps I like these little boys they're waterproof, they're going to be pretty smart for plugging the pumps into the control panel but if I need to take them away and service them all I have to do is just undo this little threaded bit here works exactly the same way as an aviation plug but these ones are waterproof and then out she pops I do also have uh, some normal aviation plugs that I'm going to use for the thermocouples, much like what Tom's got on his pots. So we've got them uh, over here already. I use them to connect up not only the thermocouple, but also we have a float level switch, which means that the elements cannot turn on unless this switch is closed. And that's the water level that closes that switch. So we're always protecting these elements from burning out by making sure that they're submerged in liquid. So I'm going to incorporate that system also in the SS Brutech pots. So yeah, that's the plan anyway. We're going to clean this up, if nothing else. I'm actually quite reluctant to piggyback, now I've said it, I'm actually quite reluctant to piggyback um, a single phase line off of this, simply because, well, this is a 16 amp three phase, but well, that means it can carry 16 amps spread across three line phases. Pulling 16 or 32 amps just on one of those phases 
I don't think the cable's heavy duty enough, it only looks like 2.5 mil to me. So I might just sling, uh, running alongside it, a 4mm square cable for the single phase and we'll put a 32 amp socket on the wall there or even over there just to carry a single phase load for the for the pilot kit. We'll see anyway. It's early doors yet. Right, just going upstairs into the back room has allowed me to solve the problem a little bit here. So we've got two 4mm square flexors of varying lengths. One about three meters and one about five meters. Got a plug on it though, that's gonna have to come off. <laughs> anyway, that's been used as an adapter briefly. Uh, I've also been in the back room and I had a roll of armored cable, three core. Look at that, so that should do the job for us to pull um, the power over from the distrib board to the side, meaning we don't have to tap off of this. So all I need is a rotary switch for single phase, an outlet, and then to hook up the other end of this um, three core into one of these sockets up here, perhaps this. We'll change this out for some MCBs. And uh, yeah, well, we should be well away then. MCB's running off that, one, two, three. And uh, these need changing out for MCB's as well, four, five, six. So you need to put six MCB's in there, wire this bad boy in, and then fit the other sections. I think we'll just kind of fit them to the wall here. It's kind of a convenient place. It's out of the way, pretty much. And then we can run the cable on a brew day along the floor. We can have the brew stand here. Then when we need to tip any waste water down the drain, it's there ready to go. So I'm just gonna finalize an order for Screwfix. And then I'm gonna shoot up and pick up the pieces that they have in stock. They don't have everything. Then we'll come back and we'll get these cables wired in and ready to rock and roll. And hopefully uh, we'll be able to make a start on the brew stand this week. Yes. So that took considerably more time than I anticipated investing in the whole scenario. So we've got spent and broken. This is the one I've replaced because it's uh, cannabled. All the uh, spent wire on the floor there from cutting off the armoured cable. Same down here, you can see that's the mess that we've made from the armoured cable. And uh, there's the new set of boxes. I am actually going to put this little USB jobby just there or there to plug the uh, scales in but I don't have any um, double patras boxes to go on the wall so all I've done is I've taped up the end of that cable it's off it's isolated with this big boy here and of course we've got a proper three phase unit that works now and at the same time I took the um, opportunity to kind of repair the mains board so all these bolts were knackered and hanging off so all I've done is uh, I've taken the I've retapped the bolt holes I've put some M5 bolts in there now and uh, that means it's secured on all four corners and uh, we've done a proper job just got to pull that sleeve down over the nut and uh, yeah it's looking a little bit more professional now than when we kind of moved in so slowly but surely we are getting there what I have to do now is just clean up this mess on the floor and then I might start um, measuring up some of this steel around here Gemma's just washing casks so we can get this beer out of the tank at the end of the week but yes, I might start measuring up so we can start cutting some of this beautiful box section, this stainless steel box section to turn into our brew stand. Right, we've got the pots out folks because I think it's time that we started measuring up to start the brew stand. 
So the plan here for us is to make a tilting system like one that I've been shown on cheekypeakbrewing.com. If you have a look at their professional system, it's called the double tip system. And it basically involves two cradles, one at the side of the other, with a support in the centre going either way, a support at the end like this, and these cradles are hung on a rotating uh, pivot here so they can swing up and down as such if that makes any sense and then you put your pots in the center like this so you'll have the mash tun there and the boil kettle there but we need to make a base plate for the whole thing to sit on before we start making the arms and then we'll make the arms before we start making the frame because of course we want the frame to be able to uh, be wide enough so we don't want to make the frame first if that makes any sense to you I think it will do so we're going to go ahead and we're going to roll a piece of 30 millimeter by 5 millimeter flat stock which I have here this is stainless steel of course and uh, we're going to roll two rings the first one for the boil kettle being 470 mil the second one for the mash tun being 505 mil so we need to know what the total um, circumference is going to be for those diameters so I need to just have a look on um, my phone so what I like to do here is just get on the phone circumference of a circle and we know the radius is uh, 235 so we'll put that in uh, 0.235 so that gives us a circumference of uh, 1 meter 480 millimeters and then if we go ahead and do the same thing for uh, the mash ton which is 250 let's call it 253 two five three then that should give us a circumference of one meter 590 millimeters so that's the plan so I'm going to cut this steel to those exact dimensions and we're going to fire up the uh, the rolling machine and we're going to roll our own ladies and gentlemen Okay, so seriously, this is where we lose a finger or something like this, so I'm just going to leave the camera rolling. I'll probably speed it up a touch, but I'm not going to do much gassing because I want to concentrate on making sure I get these pieces of steel rolled correctly. So it doesn't take much to put me off.
there we go. That is one ring. It's got a slight off shot on it, if you look at that how it meets, but it's very easy to, to bring it back into position. I think that is a good start. We'll give it a dry fit on the tanks, and if that's okay, then we'll come back and we'll roll the next one. So here we are, here we are on the tank, and if I just put it over the top like that, and I bring the two ends together, like so, it fits really quite nicely. There's a bit of space. It doesn't fit over the rolled section, the lip section on the top. So the diameter is in between the diameter of the pot, but smaller than the diameter of the rolled section. And I did give it about five mil clearance. And this looks to be a little bit more than five mil. So I think that is a good indication. I'm gonna go ahead and roll the other one. Okay, so there we are folks, look at that, that looks fantastic. We have two rings, they both look really well formed. Just a little bit of a squeeze to get the, uh, get the ends just to close up, but literally there's, I'm not putting any pressure on that whatsoever. And they're sitting nicely on the table, this one is anyway. So when they're closed up, I think they're going to be truly fantastic bases for both of those pots. The next thing I'm going to do, if you'll allow me to just sketch it on this table, uh, to hold the pots in place, we're going to put a couple of bars across like this. Almost like grill pan bars, if you know what I mean. Maybe four will be enough. So I think the weight only needs to be borne around the edges, but we'll do it this way anyway, and uh, we'll have a matching pattern for both of the rings, I think. And then of course, if I ever wanted to use gas on this system, this would enable me to do so on the boil kettle. So I'm just gonna quickly rig up the TIG welder in order to in order to tack these two rings together. We'll do one at a time. So have a look what amperage we've got on there. 80 amps should be enough on the pedal. I'm not gonna need that much, of course. I'll just stick the gloves on. And, uh, well. Let's get to work. I think I might just be able to do this freehand, you know. There's one side. That looks pretty good. Pretty snazzy him over, pin him down and there we go I decided to actually finish off the welds and uh, if you look from above they really are pretty good looking rings they're nice and equal all the way around which means that uh, hopefully you know look at that nice even gap all the way around spot on right phase two 
base supports. So I've cut an extra three bars. Oh, kicking the tripod all over the place there. I've cut an extra three bars and I've pretty much just eyeballed it. I think that is going to be enough to hold like 100 kilograms, never mind just a pot with maybe 20 kilograms of grain in. So I think that's pretty good. I think I'll just I'll just eyeball it to line it up a little bit more like this and then uh, we'll kind of just go ahead and just weld it on. I'm happy with that. 85. Yeah, I'm happy with that. I think I'm just going to go ahead and weld it on. And there's the finished article. I decided to weld it out seeing as I got going. I don't know if I can turn it over because it's still red hot. Neat little welds in the corners. I just need to... Uh, I'll probably not clean this up with a grinder. I'll probably just hit it with some pickling paste to tidy it up. But uh, I'm just going to go and spray it with some water to cool it down and we'll sit one of the pots on it, see if it actually works. And here we are, folks. That's phase one of the brew stand complete. Obviously they're on top of the tanks. But these are the cradle, the cradle bases for the tanks, for the mash tun and for the boil kettle and they look spot on. I'm looking forward to progressing with this, but probably tomorrow. Because Dominic's here, Gemma's here, and quite frankly, it is time for home. Yes, it's been a good day. We've got loads done. Uh, the brewery's looking really nice and tidy, and we've made a start on the brew stands. So, all is good in the hood. Tomorrow, however, we will be finding out whether I can continue with this design and whether I can make this work. There we go. That is kind of what we're trying to replicate. So you see these triangular braces? That's the next stage. We've got the base of the tanks. Now it's time to make the cradle and the braces. Once we've got them done, we'll be making, of course, the framework. See you tomorrow for that one, folks. Cheers.